Good morning, folks, wherever you are out there. Welcome. You are listening to the Charge Life Podcast. I am Joseph Barletta, and this is where we discuss EVs and all things EV charging. Glad you could pull over and park with us today, so let's get plugged in. Hey, look, today's episode's all about Tesla goes wireless at its most recent Robo Taxi, Robo Van unveiling. You're going to love this one. Hey, before we begin today's episodes, brought to you by Smart Charge America. Since 2007, Smart Charge America has installed tens of thousands of EV charging stations nationwide, and they can do the same for you today, whether in the home, commercial, or service. Let their team of expert installation specialists guide you to the best charging solution for your EV. After all, if you can't charge, you can't drive. Visit SmartChargeAmerica.com today to get started. Okay, look, today's episode Tesla goes wireless. That's literally all we care about, okay? We understand we had the, the Wii Robot event uh, last night. Really, really good event. Uh, I can tell you, like, here's what we know so far, kind of from what we're, we're able to see. Tesla unveils two unique models, okay? They unveiled their RoboTaxi or the CyberCab. And then they also unveiled this giant, I don't know, 25-foot, Robo van. They call it Robovan. Robovan. <laughs> I don't know what they call it, but it's basically a Robo van. So you, they unveiled their Robo taxi and their Robo van last night, and they also showed us some unique functions that the humanoid robot, which is we call Optimus, uh, is capable of. And so you can see iteration after iteration after iteration on, especially with the humanoid robot with Optimus, on how far along that program has actually advanced to. So let's look at the kind of unique shape and the features on the RoboTaxi. So what we know, we, we can kind of see that it's stainless steel, but we don't really know. It, it may be paint, it may be stainless steel, maybe like a stainless steel paint. We don't know yet, um, but you know, saving money wise, the stainless steel form factor for the Cybertruck, you know, yeah, it does save money in paint, but when you're looking at like weight and really, I guess, cost reduction, we, you know, the, the, I guess the judge is, is still out on that one. You know, the jury's still out on that. We do know that the uh, Robo Taxi is a two seater, which reports show and statistics show that 90% of all Uber drivers are all, you know, taxi, taxi driving, even all driving really done in the U.S. is is done it might be worldwide is done with two seats uh two two people so um we know we we were looking at it and we see that there's no back window huge trunk space which is almost like a, a hatchback on, on the trunk space beautiful profile and design absolutely love franz von holzen like doesn't disappoint delivers again we love it butterfly doors that's a first um, a lot of people are kind of talking about, well, the butterfly doors, well, you know, what will that look like when it's parked to other, other cars? Well, technically, the RoboTaxi shouldn't be parked uh, and, you know, like you go to it while it's parked. It, it should be to the point where it, uh, it picks you up right then and there, you know, kind of curbside, you know, right off the street. So butterfly doors, sure, why not? I, I wish he would have went with the sliding doors, but, you know. I'm, I'm okay with butterfly doors. So it is what it is. <laughs> He's not going to change it for us. Um, it did seem like it's a little bit thinner in the rear than it is in the front. And that might be just, you know, aerodynamics and design. I think they've already proven that they don't really need a back window, um, you know, with the that of the, the Cybertruck's design with the tunnel cover going down. Um, this absolutely does not have a back window. So Tesla saving a little bit more. Uh, possibly on you know weight reduction or manufacturing costs, um, you know adding glass D didn't seem like there was that much of a, a glass profile um, on the like kind of the tail swoop like we've seen in other models, um, but we did see that it, it does look like the, it's it's kind of a aerodynamic form factor that Franz had designed the actual Cybercab too. I, I can't really get the dimensions. I don't know. It it looked like it was a little thinner in the back in the rear than it is, in, you know, in the front. But, you know, for for now, uh, we'll just say that, yeah, it may be a, a slightly thinner uh, due to aerodynamics and, and, and the, the kind of the, that design profile. We do see no steering wheel, no pedal. That's huge, okay? There, there was so much talk about whether or not he's going he's gonna, to, you know, debut, uh, the, you know, without pedals and, and, and steering wheel or with. Um, and with the, the Tesla, you know, 
uh, ride sharing network will look like and and you know kind of how it's going to compete with uber i think that's going to be saved to another day i think this was basically all focused on robotics and autonomous um, you know the way that the the actual event came across and so yeah looking at uh thirty thousand dollar like basically thirty thousand dollars or less on production costs now that doesn't include full self-driving so well i would imagine it wouldn't include full self-driving so you know but maybe it, it does. I mean, you're making a car without steering wheels and pedals, and you're trying to sell it for you know less than thirty thousand dollars. So it better come equipped with that technology, you know. Otherwise, what what are we doing here? So uh, I, we do anticipate production in two thousand twenty six. Uh, it's probably going to be fourth quarter, you know, very very late months in two thousand twenty six. And you know, as far as what they did unveil was autonomous cleaning in addition to autonomous charging now the bad part and the really really sad part i think tesla really missed out on this was the inductive charging the wireless charging they didn't showcase what that looks like um what it all you know uh, entails they didn't say anything they literally said oh inductive charging and then went straight to film footage on robotics cleaning uh out of the of the actual robo taxis that that was a big miss on Tesla's part, well, at least you know from us being a charging station company, and so uh, looking at that, you're you know we're we're pretty much in this realm where they talked about hardware five inside the robo taxi and how you know five percent uh, I guess you know five hours out of the week uh, or ten hours out of the week the car is being used and then you know the other the, the rest of the time it's it's just sitting down. Uh, and so, yeah, I, you know, this whole inference compute thing, I think it's basically a competition with AWS and how you can use and piggyback off of these computer systems to help other operations within the Tesla network uh, run a, a lot more effectively and a lot more efficiently. So from, from what we're seeing, yeah, basically this thing's going to start off in 2026 debut and rights in all like the entire state not city but the entire state of texas and california from what we're seeing i mean hopefully he's got regulatory approval for that i'm pretty sure he's working on it but from from what we're seeing from what he announced during the 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 actual event in 2026 texas and california will be uh, open now he, he said the entire state he didn't really say which city so forth and so on but you can imagine it's it's most likely going to be several cities that are going to be rolled out. Uh, you may not be able to do the entire state of Texas, but maybe maybe so. We don't know. Uh, if you look at the inner workings of how uh, Cruz has been working, how Waymo has been working uh, in those particular cities, um, it, it's it's only a matter of time. But hey, look, Texas and California, we're all for it. So uh, the Robo Van, stainless steel or paint? That's uh, still to be questioned. I mean, this thing looks straight out of a I Robot movie. <laughs> looks awesome. A lot, a lot of them, uh, a lot of comments online have been talking about like Art Deco trains, you know, from 1930s, uh, which is not not too bad of a comparison. Uh, we do know it's a 14 seater. We saw 14 people come out of it and uh, no back window. There is a small little trunk space. Beautiful profile. Again, Franz delivers, uh, does not disappoint design wise. Definitely sliding doors, which we were, you know, I was really impressed with. Um, it looks like the front part is kind of pointed and the back part and the rear part is, is just you know kind of squared off uh, and then of course you have a small little trunk uh, area uh, on, on the back part that lifts up you know via you know rear trunk uh, no steering wheel no pedal uh, no price yet on that no data production on the robo van uh, from what i recall and then of course uh, we're assuming we're assuming that it's going to be inductive charging but with a giant you know, thing like that, you know, who knows, it may, it may be able to actually accommodate both. And then, uh, of course, you're still assuming the use of the inference compute, uh, you know, the rest of the time that maybe that uh, giant, you know, robo van isn't isn't running, you know, across the, the city streets. Um, we're still expected the same literally debut in the state of Texas and California for the robo van, the same with the robo taxi. So I thought that was all, all pretty, pretty cool. As far as autonomous robot goes, you could see the improvements from iteration to iteration. Don't really want to talk more about that, but I did notice the actuators actually in the forearm 
uh, for the robot, whereas the last time we saw the debut of this robot, um, that was not the case. So, guys, if you can, go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. It, the algorithm really does help us uh, out on YouTube. Uh, we definitely appreciate you listening. So, okay, lo and behold, wireless charging. What do we have here? Okay, so this is where we get really excited. So, most likely, it's probably going to be 16 amp circuit, 48 amp continuous draw, much like the Tesla wall connector is right now. So, don't really see any deviations on that. Um, you know, in the wireless charging world, once you pierce that 10 kW, 11 kW, uh, things start to get a little bit more complicated, especially on an electrical contractor's uh, standpoint, on the amount, uh, like the size wire and the size conduit and everything you have to bring to make that actual install work. Um, on from a supply standpoint and from an electrical contracting standpoint 60 amps is kind of where you want to be when you break that 60 amps start going into 70 80 amp 100 amp um, the size wire that you're using and the the code uh, all the the requirements that you have to do when you're using that size wire it does get rather complex and so um i, I you know i'm anticipating that we're going to basically be staying around that 60 amp uh you know level if you're going to eliminate the cable the reason why i mean i'm, I'm anticipating this because if you're going to eliminate the cable altogether um you need to do so with no compromise i think tesla does a really good job of doing that with no compromise and so yeah it looks it, it seems like they will start production of the cyber cab or this robo taxi uh and roughly all tesla models after 2026 uh, with the wireless charging pad you know receiver underneath and that's huge absolutely huge uh, we were waiting like that's the only thing that's kind of holding back wireless charging really is the the oems the the ev oems are not willing to just yet sacrifice weight and space to put that wireless charging pad you know inside the vehicle in production and so now we're getting 2026 these things are going to be production ready uh, for wireless charging that's huge that's really good news for us um, and so, yeah, remember the Cybertruck actually already has the attached connector uh, on the actual battery pack itself for a retrofit model, I'm imagining, for the inductive charging connection. So, you know, once they work out all the kinks, you may be able to add later on uh, the wireless charging pad underneath your Cybertruck, which is huge. And then maybe in 2026, they just start producing the Cybertruck with the wireless charging pad already connected in it. So there may be a retrofit, you know, thing there, but then maybe after 26, it's it's already included. So uh, with wireless charging, you remember you inherently kind of get your landscaping back uh, from a, a charging site perspective. You know, there's no more tall, gaudy structures, you know, blocking views, dirty, heavy, cumbersome cables to handle, um, tripping hazards, uh, you know, cable management cords breaking, and all of that stuff. You, you just you don't have to worry about that anymore, and so. You know, from what Elon had talked about at the 10 hours per week, you know, driving time and now in the cyber, you know, cab or these you know, cyber van or robo taxi and robo van, these things will be able to be utilized a lot more. So when it comes to utilization, you're looking at going from what, 10, there's 168 hours in a week. You're going from 10 hours in a week to maybe usage of 50 hours a week. Well, if you want to look percentage wise, you know, that, that's only going from 5% to 30%. So, okay, well, that's definitely higher, you know, increased utilization. Uh, but but what are the what are the vehicles doing the other 70%? Well, they're getting clean. Maybe they're, they're wirelessly charging up, right? And possibly, you know, maybe some small maintenance, you know, thing here and there, you know, inside the fleet. So that's what we're, we're, we're anticipating. Now, interestingly enough, wireless charging is actual DC charging. Okay, so you'll need an inverter on the load side to convert the actual... AC power from your home to DC power uh, and basically inside the charging pad. And then that gets transmitted to the, the, the battery pack. So it's direct power, DC to DC power on that end. And so the, believe it or not, the wireless charging pad, it, it, it like sits on the ground. It's actually called the primary pad uh, when it comes to national electric code. So uh, what does it look like? Well, from the electric panel in the home, we'll run a regular, you know, electrical circuit probably 16 amp circuit directly from the electric panel to the actual control box. This is what they're calling control box. Control box is basically a charger. It's probably got an inverter in it. It's, it's probably much like the ones that we're seeing in our homes right now when you put up a home charger, but it's probably gonna be a little bit larger uh, in form factor because it's gonna hold a lot of those power electronic components uh, and in addition to the inverter inside. And that way, it actually converts the AC power in your home to DC, goes directly into the wireless charging pad like we talked about. And so, yeah, look, NEC code 
uh, NEC 625.102B talks about the control box, and it actually talks about the mounting requirements on that actual control box. Now, what we know, you know, there's uh, ev uh, no less than 18 inches above ground inside the home, and of course, no less than 24 inches uh, above ground when installed in outdoor locations. So, uh, we do we do know that, and then what we don't know is if if there's any I guess I would say length constraints, uh, requirement constraints from the actual control box or the, the inverter, the charger on the wall to the actual charging pad. My anticipation is probably going to be somewhere manufacturers are probably uh, only going to want to include maybe 40 feet, um, you know, uh, of, of cable, you know, from, from the actual control box to the primary pad in connection. Uh, generally, after 40 feet, your communication wires kind of get a little bit wonky and, you know, so forth and so on. And their job is that, you know, of course, they're going to give you this charging system. They're going to want to minimize the cable that comes along with it. Much like, you know, you've seen, uh, you know, regular home charging stations right now. And, I mean, you're looking at some of them are equipped with 25-foot cables, some 18-foot cables. The majority of them are 18-foot cables because they know that the parking parameters and orientations that, can, can, you know, basically drivers will pull up to – they're gonna orient their vehicle, hopefully, uh, in a position where there's not really gonna be that much cable management that the, the, the actual driver has to do in order to pl plug in their vehicle. So, you know, that being said, you're looking at, w like, uh, like I said, possibly 40 feet it may be you know standard 20 feet 25 feet but you're gonna remember you you're, you're on the wall so we talked about the minimal height requirements to, in, to install that so you're gonna lose at minimum what two feet 18 inches you know going down to the ground and then you're probably gonna and, and then that's it right so if you look at the regular EV charging landscape you with a regular cable with a charger on the wall inside the home you lose about four feet going down to the ground and then your cable slides, you know, across the floor, and then you lose about another three feet uh, when you're coming back up to the car to plug in. So that's like a loss of seven, eight feet right off the bat, uh, you know, from from point to point. And so now you have, you know, if you have a what a 25 foot cable, well, great. Now you still have 17 feet of length from point to point to actually, you know, get your charging stuff in. I, I think it's probably maybe 25, maybe 40 feet that we're going to see manufacturers uh, produce the actual charging pad and the control box, that cable that, that goes in between. And that, uh, that will enable you to position that control box, you know, in, in, in not really control box, but the primary pad in a number of different maybe parking orientations to best suit uh, the EV's, you know, parking parameters. So uh, that being said, we do know that the, I, you know, I, I don't think that the, I think the power electronics will stay the same inside the EV. I think the, the inverter inside the EV will stay the same. You know, uh, I think Tesla has their power electronics mo uh, module, uh, P -E PEM, I believe they call it. I could be wrong. Don't quote me. <laughs> but I believe that's what they call it. Um, and that's where, you know, the inverter in, inside the actual vehicle itself is used for both the conversion of uh, – basically AC power that's coming in from the actual charger right now, you know, the actual physical, you know, conductive charger, the plug-in charger, it, that's going to convert that AC power to DC power and put it back into the battery pack. And then you also have the conversion from uh, extracting that DC power from the battery pack, converting it back into AC, putting it directly into uh, the actual motor itself so that the, the, you know, the vehicle can actually propel uh, and move forward. So, you know, that, I, I don't think that they'll be displacing that particular PEM, uh, the power electronics module, inside the vehicle. I, there, there may be some space savings and some weight savings or some, you know, maybe some weight surrendering that the that Tesla plans on doing here. But from, from what we're seeing, that's, you know, that's it. You know, that, that's, that's what we know. So that's really good news. Remember, wireless charging is DC to DC charging. And so from that charging pad to the actual battery pack, it's going to be magnetic resonance charging. So it's going to be charging up DC to DC. So that electronic conversion no longer has to be done inside of a, you know, advanced, you know, PEM inverter inside the vehicle. Half of that's being done now on, in your wall, you know, on, on your wall, basically with the, the charging, you know, control box. And so that may add to some efficiencies, 
but I guess we'll have to see once we when we get to, once we get our hands you know on these bad boys. So what are, what's our value conclusion from the actual event? Well, look, wireless charging is here. We we've seen. You look at the signals. You know they've hinted at it with Rebecca Tanucci. Uh, you know presentation. You know her last slide in her presentation at, at uh, Investor Day. You looked at uh, what. Jay Leno and Franz, you know, Franz hinted to it in the backseat in, in Jay Leno's uh, recent uh, review of the Cybertruck. And so you look at the signals and then, bam, Elon drops it last night, you know, wireless charging, baby, inductive charging. And so we could be more thrilled, you know, that Tesla, you know, that, that wireless charging with Tesla is finally here. We've been waiting for an OEM to actually start producing the actual charging pads uh, and everything inside the vehicle and Tesla sees it and they're going to do it. Hopefully the other o auto OEMs are, you know, kind of right behind to follow, but that's, that's, uh, that, that's, you know, for another day, for another episode, we'll see. So we've been dreaming of this today for, you know, people actually, uh, we've been telling people since day one that like, this is a, a, a core component. This is fundamentally important. It's a core component of autonomous driving. You can't have autonomous driving without wireless charging, period. You need to remove that component. Now you can maybe have robotic, uh, you know, rendezvous dock charging, something like that. But it's still not as easy. It still break, you know, uh, involves you know components that could break that will need servicing. Wireless charging, it just works, you know. And so, yeah, um, more to come in later episodes uh, as we, you know, kind of hopefully do a deeper dive into the power specifics and the uh, the power electronics on these wireless charging systems that. Tesla plans on debuting. We are working directly with the Tesla charging team, so hopefully uh, we'll have a little bit more information in the days to come. We'll share that with you, of course. But thank you so much for joining us today, listeners, subscribers uh, from home. Uh, we definitely appreciate it. We love you guys. We can't do this without you. Uh, so if you can, go ahead and click the thumbs up icon, uh, comment, share, like below if you can. And uh, look, you know, again, thanks for stopping in and charging with us today. You know, you could be anywhere, um, but you're here. You found us. If you're listening to us, we definitely appreciate it. Remember, folks, if you can't charge, you can't drive. We'll see you next time.